All right, the math counts, people. Here we go. We got our lesson for this week. Uh, we got length, area, and volume of similar shapes. That assignment that I just gave you guys, uh, but last week, it had a couple of problems that actually kind of connected with this. And I see this pop up quite a bit at the competitions. It's just finding the relationships between uh, lengths, areas, and volumes when the shapes are similar to each other. When we say similar shapes, what we're meaning is they're the exact same angle measurements of the shapes. It's just that the sides are proportional, meaning like they've been multiplied. So like if you've got a shape that's twice as big or three times as big, we would say that those are uh, similar shapes because they're in a proportion. Like uh, So if you double the side lengths here, this is a proportion of one to two. Now the areas do not go in the same proportion as the, same, as the side lengths. And a lot of it has to do with this measurement right here, your units. You can tell here that your units for length might be in like centimeters. Your units for area is centimeters squared. And then volume, of course, is centimeters cubed. Now, the reason why it's centimeters squared for area is because area, you'll usually do a length of centimeters times a width of centimeters. So you have centimeters times centimeters. And then volume, puts in another dimension in there, and so you're multiplying centimeters three different times. So if in this case you can see that one to two means that they've been doubled, if the side lengths have been doubled, the areas will not double. They will be the square of this. So the areas would be in a ratio of one to four. Because not only have you doubled the width, you've also doubled the length as well. So if you double this and double this, you get one to four. Now volume, if you're doubling the length, you're gonna double the width and you're gonna double the height. So we actually, we're gonna take it to the third power. So one to the third power would be one, and then two to the third power would be eight. So if your ratio of your lengths are in one to two, the volume would actually be one eight, meaning the bigger one would be eight times as much volume. The size has doubled, but the volume has gone up by eight times the size. Okay, so we're just gonna square the areas, square the volumes. So this one's gonna be 925, because we're squaring both of these. For volume, we cube it. Three to the third is 27. Five to the third is five times five times five. Oops, 125. If I wanna work backwards, I'd take the square root. Square root of four is two. Square root of nine is three. So if our area is in a ratio of four to nine, that means the lengths of the shape are in the ratio of two to three. And then we can cube this number to get this number over here. So two cubed is eight, and three cubed is 27. So if the area is in a ratio of four to nine, the volume would be eight to 27, and the length would be two to three. Here, we need to take the cube root of one to 125, Cube root of one is one. One number multiplied by itself three times is 125, it's five. So that one would be in a ratio of one to five. So if the volumes are in a ratio of one to 125, so 125 times bigger, the lengths will be five times bigger. And then the area, we would take this number and square it, we get one to 25 as our ratio for the areas. All right, let's just look at three real quick problems so that we can work on these. So triangle A has an area of 160 centimeters squared. If the sides of the triangle B are half the length of triangle A, find the area of triangle B. All right, so we got two triangles, A and B. So they tell us that the sides are in a ratio of uh, one to two, basically, because one is twice as big as the other one. So B is half the length of A. So four, length, A would be one, nope, B is half the length, okay. So B would be one, A would be two. So B is half the length of A. So that's the ratio of the lengths. But we don't want the ratio of the lengths, we want the ratio of the areas. So if they're in a ratio of two to one, then the areas would be in a ratio of four to one. So our areas should be in a ratio of four to one. We know that A has an area of 160. So A I'm putting on top. 
And then we're looking for the area of B. B is on the bottom, so that's going to be my X. And then you can just use cross products at this point. 4 times X is 4X. 1 times 160, 160. Divide by 4, X is equal to 40. You could have also seen that we are multiplying by 40 to get to here, so you can take 1 and multiply by 40 to get to there. So we would see that triangle B has an area of 40. Next one, we've got two similar solids. They have volumes of 24 and 81. So let's just say the first one, A is going to be 24, and solid B is going to be 81. And these are volumes. So remember with volume, we're looking for a third power or a third root. This is not a perfect third root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to reduce these first. Let's see what we'll go in. Three will go into these. So three goes into that. Three goes into this. And it ends up being eight over 27. Okay, so those are the volumes. So if 8 over 27 is the volume, the length, take the cube root of 8, which is 2, the cube root of 27, which is 3. So the length would be in a ratio of 2 to 3. And the area would be the square of these numbers. That would be in a ratio of 4 to 9. So the volume's 8 to 27, the length is 2 to 3, the area is 4 to 9. And now we can solve it. It says find the surface area of the larger one. So I'm looking for B, the one on bottom that's larger. If the surface area of the smaller one is 12. So I'm working with area ratio, 4 to 9, and we know that this is 12. I can definitely see here that I'm multiplying by 3 to get here. So we could do 9 times 3 to get 27 for X if we want to. We're just jamming through the problem, going as fast as we can. Or you can just do cross products. 4X is equal to 108. Divide by 4, and we would get 27. All right, last one. Two similar rectangles have areas of 64 over 196. So here's the first one, here's the second one, and we're looking at the areas. So we have 64 over 196. Let's find the ratios first and see if we can reduce these. Um, four goes into this one and that one. So this would be 16, that would be 49. So my area ratio, after reducing it, ends up being 16 over 49. So if my area ratio is that, I know that my length ratio should be the square of this, 4 over 7. They want us to find the width of the smaller triangle. So we're looking at length here, or width. It's going to be the same ratio. Uh, we know that the larger one has a width of 54. So the larger one, width of 54. And we're looking for the smaller one. Now this one, there is no number, I mean, no whole number that when you multiply by seven gives you 54. So let's just do cross products on this one. Seven times X is seven X. Four times 54 is 216. We divide by seven. So as an improper fraction, our answer would be 216 over seven. Maybe they want it as a mixed numeral. So as a mixed numeral, this would be 30 and six-sevenths. Or if they wanted it as a decimal rounded to the nearest tenth or something, this would be 30.6 repeating. No, it's not. <laughs> six over seven, dang it. Why did I think it was out of the uh, It comes out to uh, 0.9-ish. It ended up being 30.857, or that'd be about 30.9-ish around there. All right, so there you go. So just find your ratios, reduce whatever number they gave you first, and then you can, from the reduced ratio, I always move to the length first and then jump to either volume or area from the length. All right, that's all I got for you. Math hard. See you guys later.